So parents of one of the Kansas City Chiefs fans that were found unalive in the backyard have spoken out, and they feel, in speculation, that they may have seen something that they shouldn't have. Let's take a look at this article. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Pascal back at it again with another pop-up video. Be sure to follow me on all my social medias, The Pascal Show, one word. Hit that like button down below. And let's not forget to crush that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube and if you're watching on Facebook. Please be sure to crush that follow button on my Facebook page if this is your first time checking out this channel right here. Anyway, we got to jump into this story. As you guys already know, we have been covering very, very closely this whole Kansas City Chiefs fans situation this mystery it's getting weirder and weirder and we've you know i've already said this thing's getting thicker than a snicker and uh thanks to Perserno, let's keep it real he's not making this situation any better and if you don't know who i'm talking about Perserno is the lawyer for jordan willis and he's going on all kinds of interviews and just talking crazy that's just what i think there's so many dis there's so many inconsistencies. It is very, very frustrating. And I know this is not making things better and helping families getting closer to clarity, transparency, and possibly justice. But there's an article where one of the Kansas City Chiefs fans' parents have spoke out. And the thing is, is, this is all speculation. I just want you to know this is not facts or anything of that sort. This is just them throwing out their theories on what could have happened. And the thing is, is if Jordan was more transparent and more honest with his timeline, there would be no speculation like this. The whole world wouldn't be coming out here scratching their heads, putting on their tinfoil hats. Let's keep that a buck, all right? These families deserve clarity. That's what they deserve. And if there's justice that needs to be served, they deserve that as well. But right now, all they can do is sit here and speculate. Let's take a look at this article. Article, Like I said, Kansas City Chiefs fans found frozen to their demise. We got to use these code words. They said, like I said, this is speculation, that they believe that maybe they saw something that they shouldn't have. This is what the parents are claiming. All right, so let's get into this article. We're going to be kind of jumping in and out of this article here. But the parents of one of the three Kansas City Chiefs fans found frozen to their demise outside their friend's homes, friend's home, believe their son's demise may be more malicious than officials have led on. So David Harrington, 37, was found dead outside pal. I don't even know if he's really a pal, but, you know, we got to use that word, I guess. Jordan Willis, his home. On January 9th, two days after he had gone with friends to watch the Chiefs game, uh, to you know, watching them take on the LA Chargers for their last regular season game. All right, of course, we then, of course, Ricky, Clayton, and David's bodies were found on the property in the backyard. To be exact, one was on the patio, and two of them were found in the backyard, actually in the grass in the backyard. How far away they were. Don't know, but we do know that that backyard is a very big backyard. All right. Just so that you guys all know. All right. Now, apparently, as we already know, Willis had no idea that the men were outside, according to his attorney, Mr. Perserno. Okay. He had slept for nearly 48 hours after the game and only learned that the bodies were there when police visited the home for a welfare check. There were text messages, Facebook messages, there were phone calls that made to his phone, and yet he still slept through all of that, which is absolutely insane, all right? And that's what he's claiming. So let's get into this. While the victim's families anxiously await for the results of the toxicology reports in the mysterious deaths, Harrington's father, John, said he's not buying Willis's version of what happened. Harris, Harrington's mother also, Harrington's mother and I are both convinced that Jordan Willis played a, a part in this somehow. This is what he told the news. We just haven't figured it out yet. What else could it be? Perfectly healthy men just don't drop off the face of the earth. And he's not wrong. And like, like, like I've said before, with all due respect, this is not like God went over to the, to the light switch and chose those three men to just flip the light switch off. It just doesn't make any sense. Like they just unplugged him 
them all three from the matrix all at the same time again it just doesn't make any doggone sense and the only person in my personal opinion that knows the truth that holds the key to the truth is jordan willis and possibly the mysterious fifth member that was there that left claiming that he saw these guys watching jeopardy when he left they were alive jordan was still awake and they were watching Jeopardy, according to the fifth mysterious friend. All right? So let's continue. There were four of you in the house, and now three of them are dead, and you're not. That doesn't add up, the father said. I'm thinking that he, the three of them, learned something or saw something that they shouldn't have seen. Well, I need to get rid of you now. Friends or not, we're going to go back to that. John Harrington said, the father said, he has spoken to the Platt uh, County Prosecutor's Office, which is investigating the case, but is convinced that officials will dismiss the demise as nothing more than an OD. And of course, we got to use these code words. But I don't think it's as simple as that, he told the outlet. I'm aware that they may have done some substances that were questionable, but the idea was to get high, not, not dead. If they were supposed to be friends, why didn't Willis come find them? I'm sure they have a hundred different answers to, to that, but that's my question. Harrington's mother, Jennifer, acknowledged that while her son smoked cigarettes and drank beer with his, with his buddies, she doesn't believe he would just OD. Yes, I believe that something happened that night and that Jordan had something to do with it. We all believe that Jordan had something to do with that. She pointed out how Willis claims he didn't leave his house for two days, giving him ample time, and I agree with this, ample time to get rid of the edit, any type of as evidence. Remember, any residue, any paraphernalia, any you know little tools that they use, whatever it might be, he had plenty of time to clean up the crime scene if there was a crime that took place here, right? She also was, was she was also frustrated. He's not made, he, he was not made to take any drug or alcohol tests since the bodies were found. And that's a good that's a good point there, too. Remember. When the cops finally showed up and when he finally answered the door, he was in his underwear, holding the wine glass, I guess surprised. And it to me, it doesn't make any sense. And it makes you wonder, was he on a bender? Was he just, was he just drinking hard? Was he just going in on a, on, on a whole bunch of snow, right? A whole bunch of other party favors? You know, it just taking the whole week, those two days off to just do whatever the hell he wants. I don't know. But it, like I said, and like the family is saying, there's too many questions here that there's too many holes that haven't even been filled here. And that's frustrating. Okay. So she says, Jordan's not telling the truth. And I don't blame her. When you tell the truth, your story is solid. This part is extremely important. important. Your story is solid. It's when you're lying that your story changes. Damn right. And that's what's been happening. I don't understand why the police don't see that. The inconsistencies have been absolutely insane and mind-boggling, almost comical in a tragic way, especially coming from Perserno. All the lies have been coming from him, and that's his legal representation, by the way. Kansas City police have been emphatic that Willis is not suspected of any wrongdoing and the deaths are not being investigated as a homicide, which we already know. And of course, no arrests have been made because if there was an arrest that was made, trust and believe that that would have that would have made headlines by now. All right. But again, this is the this is the backyard. That's a pretty big backyard. But notice how close I mean, the patio is. Ground level, right? Level with the ground. There's and it, 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 we've already seen the other side, like the 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 patio doors, the sliding glass door, all that stuff. Those things are massively huge. There's big windows and all that. It is hard. I feel like it's impossible for you not to see at least a body, 
laying right here on this patio floor. I just don't believe it. Okay. Now, of course, we already know that the fifth friend was out here saying that he was not the last person to see uh, his friends alive. But he did say that as he left, they were sitting there chilling, watching Jeopardy. All right. Another piece that's very important. Police did confirm that Willis allowed officers to search his home. But I wonder why he was able to be like, yeah, come on in. Come on in. Clearly, he cleaned his stuff up, y'all. He cleaned up anything that could have incriminated him, could have thrown him in jail, etc. Let's be real. And of course, I, I like I said, this, this is speculation on my part. Maybe, maybe nothing happened, and everything that happened to them happened outside. But nonetheless, he had days to clean up his act. All right, Perserno said. Willis has moved from the rental home, which we already know. But what's interesting is he moved out of fear of retaliation. And, of course, I know that he's put a leave of absence at his job as well because of everything that's been going on with this situation. Now, one thing I want to point out, this part right here. I think that he, the three of them, learned something or saw something that they shouldn't have seen. And he decided, well, I need to get rid of them now, friends or not. Now, I'm curious, what could it be that they possibly saw that would make them lose their lives in the way, in this mysterious fashion? Now, again, this is just speculation from a very upset family. And again, because the facts are all over the place, there is nothing but speculation and theories flying out the out the gate right now so i don't blame the families coming out with their own speculations because all they want is the tra they want transparency and they want the truth but it is interesting because it, i i still wonder is it because of the of things that he's looking into was he researching something for his job because he wor is working on some things for uh, hiv and whatnot could there be something that he had inside the house that was concerning to the three of them? I don't know. But the only reason why, again, like I said earlier, the only reason why the families are sitting here saying something like this is because there is no transparency and that Jordan, and because Jordan Willis keeps changing his story. Again, this lawyer that he has should have turned to him and said, listen, after the first screw up, screwed up interview, he should have turned to him and said, listen, man, I need you to sit down and you need to practice. <laughs> Get your story straight. You keep changing it. You keep moving the goalpost. You keep blaming everything else, except problem is, is that it's not consistent. It's inconsistent and it's starting to make people very concerned think that you are the one who did this. And if he is innocent, this is not how you conduct yourself. There are too many, too many red flags, y'all. It's red flag city with this guy. And now you got family coming out with their speculations. This should not be happening right now. But I do understand. I understand the speculations. They are sitting there. Imagine being a father, being a mother, your own, your own flesh and blood mysteriously passes away. You have no idea what happened. Police are not contacting you and letting you know what's going on. All you have is your time and your mind. Idle time because you don't have anything else. And you got a guy who is alive, constantly changing their story. Yes, it's going to spark a lot of theories, a lot of speculation, and a lot of conspiracies. It's really sad, but again, I wanted to share that with you guys. This would not be happening if Jordan stepped forward and told the actual truth. And what's really sad about this, too, if you really think about it, y'all, as soon as he does tell the truth, are we going to believe him? When he finally mutters out of his mouth the real timeline of what really happened? Think about that, too.
Anyway, guys, that's the video. Comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Where do you stand on this? Where do you stand on this? Again, my heart goes out to the families. I hope they get clarity and I hope they get the justice that they rightfully deserve as soon as possible. Jordan needs to get his story straight and be honest. But it may be too late for that. I don't know. Anyway, comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to hit that like button down below. Crush that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. And, of course, hit that follow button on my Facebook page if you're watching on Facebook. It would be great to have you a part of the Pascal Show family on both platforms. Anyway, it's time to get going. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys in the next video. This is the Pascal Show. Bye. P-A-S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild